Hi everybody, welcome back. This is the last video I'm going to make for chapter 9. And today's primarily going to talk about uh, about rational solving rational equations and inequalities. Uh, I want to get into a, an alternate way to solve these in a minute, but let's take a look at problem number 10 from your book. Uh, let me put the problem up here so you can see what it is. All right, here's that problem, and as I mentioned on the last video, this is a pretty typical problem that you will find on SAT tests. So knowing how to work these is particularly helpful. It also is extremely helpful that you understand how dimensional analysis works, and we'll review that a little bit as we go through this. Here we go. Get your book out and read along with me, please. A bricklayer can build a wall, a wall of a certain size in five hours. Another bricklayer can do the same job in four hours. If the bricklayers work together, how long would it take to do the job? Well, some of you might say, well, it's nine hours. Well, no, no, one guy only took four hours, one guy only took five. It's got to be somewhere in between those two. Some might say, well, it's got to be the average of the two. No, happens to be some ratios involved here. So the number is between four and five hours, but it's not four and a half. So let's take a look at how to set that up, okay? All right, here's the critical numbers from that problem. Uh, the bricklayer, first bricklayer, takes five hours to lay a particular wall. The same wall, the second bricklayer, takes four hours. Well, we need to understand that <clears throat> that to do this problem, and many problems, uh, a formula that we use a lot is rate times time equals distance. Now you may say, well, what's the distance? They're not, they're not really going anywhere. It's no, no distance. In our particular case, we're going to let D, the distance, be the same as the entire job. The entire job. So when somebody says go the distance, what they kind of mean is do the entire do the entire race, do the entire job. So the distance is going to be the entire job gets done, and when it's going to get done part by bricklayer, uh, the first bricklayer, and part of it's going to get done by by the second bricklayer. Well, if rate times time equals the distance, we know that both of them. Let's do each one here. Bricklayer 1 times his time plus bricklayer 2 times his time. Well, the rate of the bricklayer makes a difference, but they're both spending the same amount of time on the problem, and the entire job is 1. So what we need here is a rate. Rate times time plus rate times time. This guy's rate times the same amount of time as this guy's rate times the same amount of time. And the total job then gets done is number one. The entire job is one. What ha people have to try to remember is that we have to think of the entire job as one. Okay. Well, bricklayer, the first bricklayer takes five hours to do the job. Five hours for one job. Okay. Well, if the units of measurement, this is, gets us back to dimensional analysis, if these have to add up to job, one job, this fraction is actually upside down. Because remember, this is t hours. If I turn this fraction over, it makes sense. A rate doesn't have to be in a particular order, five hours to the job, or you could say one hour, one job to the hours. So let's flip this fraction over and make it one job in five hours. Now, according to the uh, dimensional analysis, hours ought to cancel hours, and I'm left with jobs on the top. This is what we want. We want to make sure that the jobs is left over after we've canceled all the units of measurement. So we're going to do the same thing here with the second brick layer. He does one job in four hours, okay? And hours is going to cancel hours here. Hours will cancel hours, just like over here, hours, canceled hours, and we're left over job, job, jobs, plus job equals jobs. So 
we, we know that this has to be the correct setup because the units make sense here. Hours went out. That's T hours, by the way. Hours went out and jobs was remaining in the answer. So let's get rid of all the units and see what we got here. One fifth T plus one fourth T equals one whole job. There's the problem. Okay? This is his rate times time plus this guy's rate times time gives me the entire job. One job in five hours, one job in four hours. Just try to remember that when you set these up, that the units of measurement have to make sense. Well, let's go ahead and do the algebra on this. All right, I've copied the problem down again, and I rewrote it so that the, the units are a backup here, just so we can see that again. Once again, jobs per hour, or excuse me, no, yeah, one job per how many hours, one job per how many hours, and of course, hours canceled here. We're left over with jobs plus jobs equals jobs, okay? So if we want to solve this equation, we're going to have to get a common denominator. I can see it's 20 here. So if I multiply both sides by 20, I'll end up with 4t plus 5t equals 20 or 9t equals 20. Dividing both sides by 9, we see that t is Let's see, 9 goes into 20 twice, uh, 18 with 2 left over, 2 and, and 2 ninths uh, hours. So I, I was wrong. It wasn't between 4 and 5 hours. It had to be a lot less than that because they were working, both of them were working. So it kind of has to be, you know, less than, less than 4 hours because one of them did it in 4. So I, I was totally wrong there. Lost my mind for a minute. Turns out that they take about two and two ninths hours working together to complete that job. Now, they're going to get another problem like this probably later in the homework. I want to show you a shortcut way to do this, and this only works with two workers. If there's more than two workers, like three workers, you can't, you got to use the technique I just used here. But if there's only two workers, it's actually a pretty simple job. Okay, it works like this you take the product. The product of the two times over the sum of the two times. And there's that 20 ninths, or 2 and 2 ninths. Now this works for two workers only. This is a shortcut way to think about it. If you had three workers, this does not work. Anything more than two. Take the product of the number of hours and divide it by the sum of the number of hours. That's kind of a shortcut way to do the problem like this. People on math team that have to do these problems, that's a, a trick that they learn so that they can do these pretty quickly without all the setups. But again, if you've got more than two workers, this technique doesn't work. You can't just multiply them all together and add them all together. That doesn't work. So if you get a problem like this with two workers, you've got a shortcut here too. But just try to remember that, that the distance they travel here, the distance they go, is one job. All right, let's look at a different word problem. All right, let's take a look at number 33. It's part of your homework for tonight. I'm reading it from the book. You can read along with me if you want. It's on page 510. It says the band has 30 more members than the school corral. If each group has 10 more members, the ratio of their membership would be 3 to 2. The ratio of their membership would be 3 to 2, or that's the fraction, 3 over 2. How many members are in each group? Well, I've got a band, and I've got a corral, and I want to express both of them, if possible, with a single letter. And it looks like they're, the band is being compared to the corral. The corral is the basis of comparison. So let's let C equal to the number in the corral. And then if that's true, the band has 30 more members. So C plus 30 would be the number of people in the band. Again, I'm trying to express this, uh, both the band and the corral, using a single letter. Now, I could have done this problem solving a system. And in essence, that's what we're doing here, solving a system. But I've already made the substitution. 
Now it says if we added 10 more members to each group, the ratio would be 3 to 2. Well, notice the number on the top is, is 3 and the number on the bottom is 2. So the bigger group has to be on the top of our fraction here. So that means that the band has to be over the corral because we know the band is bigger. And the band has C plus 30 and the choir the corral has C. But then it said they're going to add 10 members to each group. So let's add 10 up here to this group and add 10 to this group, add 10 to each group and that ratio ought to be 3 to the 3 to 2. So the new band size over the new corral size ought to be this particular set of fractions here. So what I've got is C plus 40 over C plus 10 equals 3 over 2. There's a ratio between the new band and the new corral that's 3 to 2. Now, we could get a common denominator here, but one of the things I did not mention before is that you're all familiar with solving a proportion. When there's a single fraction on both sides of an equal sign, you can cross multiply. And if that does happen, that you get a single fraction, you can cross multiply. It doesn't always happen in this chapter. But I'm going to cross multiply here. So 2 times C plus 4 is 2C plus 80. And 3 times C plus 10 is 3C plus 30. Then we'll go ahead and solve this, subtracting, subtracting 2C from both sides. And let's subtract 30 from both sides. I end up with 50 equals C. So we find out that the corral originally had 50 members. Well, let's just test this out. If the corral had 50 and the band had 30 more than that, the band would have had 80 altogether. The band to the corral ratio, if we add 10 more people in each group, that gives us 90 over 60. That's true. That's a 3 to 2 ratio. So I, all I wanted to point out on this problem is sometimes cross multiplying is easier if there's a single fraction on each side. If you've got multiple fractions, you're going to have to get a common denominator to do that. All right, let's look at one more. All right, let's take a look at page 510, problem 36. This is another problem that you will typically find on SAT tests and the like. On a particular day, the wind added 3 kilometers per hour to Alfonso's rate when he was cycling with the wind, and it subtracted 3 kilometers per hour from his rate on his return trip. That makes sense. The When the wind's at his back, it's kind of making him go faster, and when the wind's in his face, it makes him slow down by that same amount. Alfonso found that in the same amount of time he could cycle 36 kilometers with the wind, he could go only 24 kilometers against. What is his normal bicycle speed with no wind? All right, you're going to keep the book in front of you and me too. Let's see if we can set this thing up. Okay, one of the first things I noticed here is that when you see the word same in a problem, it could mean it's solving a system. Or we could maybe just set the two equal to each other using substitution. So it sounds like two things are the same. I'm going to make two things equal to each other. There we go. There's a better picture there. I'm going to set two things equal to each other. Now, what we don't know is his normal speed. So if we let x be his, his speed with no wind, then we can set up the problem. The thing we want to find is usually the variable, isn't it? Let x equal the speed with no wind. So it says that he can spavel the same distance. Now remember, rate times time equals distance. And over here, the same thing. Rate times time equals distance. If they're traveling the same distance, I'm sorry, it says, yeah, they're not traveling the same distance, but they are traveling the same amount of time. Let's solve both of these for t. 
Let's solve this for t. Divide by r, and I get t equals d over r. Same thing over here. If I divide by r, I get t equals d over r. So if the times are the same, it says it's, you travel the same amount of time, I'm going to have d over r going with the wind and d over r against the wind. That should be my setup here. The time is the same, so I set them equal to each other. Time is the distance over the rate. We just went ahead and solved for t so that we could set them equal to each other. So let's move this out of the way and set up the equation according to the problem. Okay. All right. It says with the wind, he added three kilometers to his speed. Well, with the wind, his speed plus three kilometers per hour, and he went 36 miles with the wind. 36 miles with the wind. And then against the wind, he went 24 kilometers per hour, but it took away three kilometers, 24 uh, kilometers. It took away three kilometers from his speed. So we'll take away three kilometers from his speed. His rate was improved three kilometers per hour when he's going with the wind, and it was hindered three kilometers per hour when he was going against the wind. Now, there you go. You've got a setup here. And because there's a, a, there is a, a single fraction on each side, I could cross multiply here. Um, you know what? I'm going to do it the way we did it before and see that you end up with the same result here. This fraction is missing r plus 3. And this fraction is missing r minus 3. And you'll notice what we end up with is that the denominators are going to be no longer here. We're ignoring the denominator. And we got 36 times r minus 3 and 24 times r plus 3. You notice it's the same thing as if I cross multiplied here. It's the same thing. So it's, that process works either way, but it only works if there's a single fraction on each side. Let's multiply this out. 36r minus uh, 108 equals 24r plus uh, 72. Let's, uh, let's subtract 24r from both sides. And let's add 108 to both sides. Just adding these up here. This turns out to be 12r. This is gone. This is gone. And this is uh, what, 180, I think it is. Yes, 180. So if we divide both sides by 12, r is uh, 12 goes in there, 1, 12, 15. His, his speed is 15 kilometers per hour. When he was going with the wind, he went 18. When he went against the wind, he was only going 12 kilometers per hour. His speed with, with the wind was quite, quite a bit faster. So you can see that if you try to set these up, you're going to have to remember that that distance equals rate times time formula had to be solved for t. Now, I could have written two equations here and solved this system with a system approach. Um, enjoy your time working on the rest of these word problems. If you need to uh, look at any particular problems, uh, send me an email and I will set up a, a Zoom with you and we'll talk you through some problems. Here's your assignment for tonight. All right, here are the next couple assignments to help you get ready for that test. The test will be uh, Wednesday. It happens to be the week of April uh, 20th, 29th, I believe. That's the Wednesday. That's Wednesday the 29th. So um, we'll be testing shortly. So be get yourself ready for that. Uh, this week you're going to finish up with assignment X. And then next week, Monday and Tuesday. And then uh, we'll take your test on Wednesday. If you have any questions, make sure you contact me. You can find all this stuff on your Canvas site. So uh, have fun. Give me an email if you have a question. And I'll get back to you with a Zoom if we can. Take care.